Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't give the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happened. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic, nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's Tuesday, and we're going to continue our journey on some cases out there that are continuing and pretty messed up. We're going to be talking about Hell's Angels, Rhode Island, Joseph Lancia, and the hurdles that he is facing in his case right now that I have to say is pretty un-American. Wait till you hear what this judge is all about. We're going to walk you through why a judge should be recusing themselves when they have a conflict of interest. In this case, this judge surely does this is the first uh, part uh, first segment whatever you want to call it over here on YouTube you can go over to WMMRDB Rockford our radio station at MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com to finish up the show we go to about 930 there and once that's over all the episode together goes over to iHeart Spotify and all that so get on over there and check it out so what's this case all about this case has to do with a former member that was driving by the Hells Angels Clubhouse. And I believe, personally, after reading a lot of it, that he was antagonizing them. And could go as far as saying that he was an informant, which is something that has been alleged in court as entrapment. But those that are the naysayers that, you know, they're nothing but behind the blue line that say entrapment does not happen, hmm, you're full of crap. It goes all the way up to the high levels of federal government. I was just, you know what, Sammy the Bull Gravano, he has a new podcast out, and it's on YouTube as well. And regardless of what you think about him, he tells a story about his time within the Mafia outfit, as we call it here in Chicago. And I believe he was talking about Joseph Monza today. For those that do not know, he is one of the first bosses, I believe it was the Bananos, that he ratted on everybody. Now, you want to talk in track. There was this guy that he was really close to. The FBI got him, and this is when he flipped already, got him on the phone with this dude, and I just listened to his podcast today about it, and said, you want somebody killed. FBI sitting right next to him. He says... I might spend some more time or I might go uh, to life or something like that he put on him and said, I need you to take out the prosecutor on this. Well, the guy agreed to because he was close to this guy. He didn't know a boss would flip. Who would have known? Yes, it's happening even in the freaking syndicate now. You know, we've already seen that. We uh, checked out that one case uh, that had to do with Pike. Uh, the Banditos deal down in Texas where a National Sergeant at Arms actually rolled over. So nothing ever surprises me anymore. So anyway, he sets this up. If you cannot tell me that that's not entrapment, that's big time entrapment. The guy, the uh, feds had him do it. How he was convicted of that crime, I don't know. I, uh, he's still alive today. He's still in prison. Why, why hasn't anybody in the appeals process seen this? It's very disturbing because justice in this country is supposed to be blind and fair. 
Well, there's two systems, if you haven't already noticed, in this country. One for the rich and powerful, and then another for everything else. Once you get on the government's radar, they can do anything they want. Anything they want to get their targets. In that uh, mafia case that Gravano was talking about, it happened there. It trapped them big time. And now in this case, it looks like he was an informant, an infiltrator. The judge on this case is married to a cop, a lieutenant, that's been to that clubhouse before. Now a judge is saying, well, I'm not going to discuss any details of the case with them. I'm going to stay, you know, non-biased and stuff. You cannot tell me that she's going to do that. The broad is sleeping with this guy. She's the wife. You cannot tell me when they're laying in bed that she ain't going to open her mouth and say, hey, what do you think? I don't think that's possible, and I don't think it happens. They can say that all they want to, but I don't believe it. Not one second. That's a conflict, because what's going to happen is, she's going to go to him for advice. Can you tell me what these Hells Angels are all about? And then he's going to tell her about the time when he was on the force over there, that they busted down the doors, they busted this person, that one. It's a violent criminal gang is what they're going to tell her. My question is, her knowing this, why did she fight so hard to be on this case? It went all the way to the Supreme Court. All the way. Not the Supreme Court, Supreme Court, but the state Supreme Court. All through this process, she says she don't need to recuse herself. Any other judge would have said, you know what, enough is enough. Just give me another case, this ain't worth it. So what reason can you give me that she was so adamant about staying on this case. Is it the limelight? Is it the media attention that she might get because it is a Hell's Angels on trial? Interesting stuff. The Constitution actually states due process on why a judge should resign or uh, recuse themselves. How can you objectively give justice to the defendant with the ties that she has? You can't. Again, pillow talk. They're going to be discussing the case. And what my concern is that if he's found guilty, oh, this broad's going to throw the book at him. What is that? There's nothing like uh, uh, a woman scorn or something? Yeah, because he took it to the state Supreme Court and bucked her. So already he has a strike against him. Already he has this image that the Hells Angels are a motorcycle gang and you know what's going to happen, right? They're not going to put him on trial. They're going to put the club on trial. Just like they did with Freddy's case. They put the pagans on, his, on trial in his deal. Now, with the notoriety of the Hells Angels, that's exactly what's going to happen here. And I can guarantee you, the judge is going to allow it when it should not be allowed. How can you put an entire club on trial like they're about to do? It has no relevant facts to the case. Yeah, he was a hell's angel. 
But what happened on the West Coast or what happened down South, North, whatever it may be, has no bearing on him. But that, I guarantee you, fellas, is what's going to happen. They're going to pull that BS right there and use the club. They're going to prosecute the club on the stand. And then what happens? What happens? One more conviction if it happens. Well, this continues to prove that this motorcycle club is a motorcycle gang. It's like the prosecutors use this as a notch in their belts. And it also is used to give more firing power to the DOJ. This is why there's people losing their jobs when they're in clubs. And there's a lot of naysayers on that. And I'm actually working on one right now where... Oh, you! I'll just let you uh, hang there with that one. But there's one that we're going to be talking about that's pretty messed up. We're going to go in depth about it. The whole nine yards. But yes, it's this kind of stuff that leads to people losing their jobs because the government says it's a criminal gang. Next thing you know, they can't get security clearances and none of that stuff. Let's uh, talk about recusal and what does it mean? Now, a lot of us know what it means, but for those that don't, judge recuse themselves when they take no part in deciding cases that they would otherwise help decide. The due process clauses of the United States Constitution Everybody remember that, right? The United States Constitution, because lately it seems like, you know, they just wipe their ass with it and throw it out because they don't follow it any damn way. It requires judges to recuse themselves from cases in two situations. Where the judge has a financial interest in the case's outcome. Where there is otherwise a strong possibility that the judge's decision will be biased. A strong possibility. Underline that. That the judge's decision will be biased. She is sleeping with a cop married to a cop that busted down them doors. He has had dealings with the Hells Angels. So how can you tell me that there's not going to be any bias there? Now, the Supreme Court, again, addressed this recusal in a 2009 case, Caperton v. Massey Coal Company. In that case, one party requested that a judge recuse himself because the other party's CEO spent over $3 million dollars getting the judge elected. And this is one reason why I cannot stand that judges are, can be a part of one party or the other. You can't do it because then what you do is bring your biases from your thinking or the party's platform onto the job. There was, uh, the Supreme Court found that there was no evidence that the judge was biased. It still held that he had to recuse himself from additional information and all that. Well, damn, they actually did something right, the Supreme Court. Just today, they decided that Hillary Clinton doesn't have to give a deposition to the just, uh, Judicial Watch. If it was you and I, though, you're damn right they would. That's the first definition. And that's from Cornell. This right here is from the American Bar Association. Rule 2.11 Disqualification. A. A judge shall disqualify himself or herself in any proceedings in which the judge's impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Reasonably be questioned. 
So is it reasonable to say that she's going to have a biased opinion because her husband's a cop and worked case with them? I think that's pretty reasonable to ask. Including but not limited to the following circumstances. The judge has a personal bias or a prejudice concerning a party or party's lawyers or personal knowledge of facts that are in dispute. Two, the judge knows that the judge, the judge's spouse, or domestic partner, or a person within the third degree of a relationship to either of them, or the spouse or domestic partner of such a person is... A party to proceeding or an officer, director, general partner, managing partner, or trustee of a party. Again, this is from the American Bar Association. The judge's spouse or, dis or domestic partner. She's sleeping with the damn cop that had dealings with this club. How is that not right? Person who has more than a de minus interest that could be substantially affected by the proceeding or likely to be a material witness? I'd call the judge if I asked them, man. If I were the defense attorney, I'd call the judge. Call her, Stan. Let's go. That'd be funny shit. Uh, the judge knows that he or she individually or as a fiduciary or the judge's spouse, domestic partner, parent, or child, or any other member of the judge's family residing in the judge's household has an economic interest. Or the judge knows or learns by means of a timely motion that a party, a party's lawyer, or the law firm of a party's lawyer has within the previous year made an aggregate contribution to a judge's campaign and blah 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 I think they hit it right there in the first uh, three deals with her so why is it the state supreme court said well there's no bias what dude whatever you guys are smoking I want to smoke some of that it's pretty easy for us commoners, if you want to call it, to figure this kind of stuff out. But they make it so damn hard. It says they're in black and white, just like the black and white in the Constitution. But they bring that ideology to the bench. Now, here's the stuff here. The Rhode Island Hells Angel president claims entrapment in shooting case. Says was a victim was uh, says victim was a police informant. Funny how at the beginning of the show uh, a mob boss ordered somebody over the phone with FBI agents sitting right there to kill somebody. They told them to do it. That screams entrapment. This is the kind of stuff they're getting away with. The president of the Hells Angel Rhode Island chapter is accusing the authorities of trying to entrap him and going easy on a star witness with a violent history. He pleaded not guilty in district court, Lancia, to two misdemeanors stemming from an altercation at the Cadillac Lounge Strip Club when they saw him punch a man. Now, that was a strip club altercation. The grand jury was, and this is the one case, the grand jury, it had nothing to do with the one where the recusal, but I'm going through everything here, launched a number of accusations about this guy. But the grand jury didn't get to hear any of the information. With this happening, a fundraiser for him, and I think we covered this. Look at all the coverage from the cops. It's like they never stop. 
They're always up in your business. If you're on the radio, you got to come over here and see that. You just see him going around and around and around because this is for his defense fund. Judge refusal to step aside from presiding over a case involving the purported president of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club Rhode Island chapter. Although her husband was formerly a lieutenant with the Rhode Island State Police. I'm surprised they even put it in there. Kristen Rogers rejected a request that she recuse herself from hearing the case stemming from a June 12th raid at the Hells Angels Clubhouse. They argued it com- uh, created an appearance of impropriety for Rogers to oversee the case because her husband is a retired lieutenant of the state police. He now works as a police chief in Little Compton. They asserted that Reigns or someone under his supervision may have written documents involved in the case. To suggest that Chief Reigns, this is her husband and she's talking, entering to the particular premises decades ago creates an appearance of impropriety is an, uh, as unreasonable as concluding that recusal is required in a motor vehicle accident case where a judicial officer's spouse patrolled the roadway on which the accident occurred in his role as a police officer many years before. The facts and circumstances on the record and in reality are bereft of any bias, prejudice, or appearance. Hmm. Really? <laughs> really? Now he's a police chief. And he's already got a bias towards the angels. This is where he lost the bid for her to be gone. The state's highest court has denied a request by the head of the Rhode Island chapter of the Hells Angels for a new judge. In an order issued, denied his request for them to weigh in on Associate Justice Christian Rogers' decision not to recuse herself. Really? Do you find it funny that they always decide, well, we don't want to get involved? This is a constitutional question. His constitutional rights. What's going to happen? He's going to get convicted, sit in jail, and it's not going to be rectified until the appeals that can happen six or seven years later? How is that justice? Unreal. Bacula says Reigns was a member of the same tactical team that conducted a raid on the Hells Angel clubhouse. They said the defense needs to know if Reigns provided training to any of the members of the tactical team that conducted the raid and if he was involved in any aspect of a permanent video surveillance system the state police put out outside the clubhouse. Really? Taxpayer money for a video surveillance that's there permanently. Talk about screwed up. Absurd and condescending, the prosecutors say. Why wouldn't you? You got a judge in your pocket now. That's what that's saying to me, anyway, is you got this judge. But that's not how everything's supposed to work. But, of course, we all know the realities of life. It never works out that way. It might sound like a good ideal that, hey, man, we're all supposed to be treated equally under the law. No, that's not how it works out. These judges are bought and paid for. Like you've seen in the one case that the Supreme Court decided in 2009, one of them was involved in the judge's freaking $3 million effort to get back into the seat. Who pays $3 million to get back on the bench? People that have to do favors. 
I, uh, what happened here? You know what? I just thought of that. I was like, wait a second here. So if I give you three million to your campaign, am I going to get any special treatment? I'm just wondering. Because I just gave you three million bucks, and I ain't going to do it on the freaking night kindness of my heart. Kind of like bribery, isn't it? I would think so. Bribery is very serious, but the Supreme Court didn't address that. So this is a case you really want to watch. It's nasty business. And I want to say to those people out there that are so ignorant and because of their support for the blue that you can't look past and see reason. You can't even argue good. You know, you, I see you in the comments all this time uh, in YouTube. You can't even put up a good argument. That shows lack of intelligence right there, for one. And two, that's ignorant as hell. If you're going to state a position, explain it. Explain to us why this isn't a recusal deal. Explain to us why she shouldn't. Or explain to us why the DOJ doesn't use this against clubs when there's somebody convicted. You're saying they don't. Explain why. My position is every time a club member gets found guilty, the DOJ takes that as the whole club is involved in criminal activity. Hell, they've been doing it to the Angels since what, 79 when they first used RICO against them? When is there going to be some cases decided on appeals at the Supreme Court level where they're actually going to listen to the argument from the defense instead of dilly dallying around with the prosecution? I don't know. Sad state of affairs. Again, this is why I like doing these case things. Because it isn't fair. You already got one thing going against you when you know, you're a biker on the street. Two, if you're in a club, you got another thing going against you. That is not how this country was set up to be. You have a right to free association. And you also have a right to your Fourth Amendment. You have a right to due process. And this is not due process by any means. But judges all hang out, pull each other's peckers. That's what they do. Sad state of affairs, man. So we're going to go over to the second segment of the show over on WMMRDB or WW. Uh, WMotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com or you can go into the Discord server. We're usually uh, over there with the cameras on. Everybody can see us over there. Uh, you to talk to us in general chat as well. Why we're doing the show. Ask questions. Make statements. We'll read them on air. All that type of stuff. So I'll get over there. See you later guys at YouTube if you're not going to be over there but you're going to be missing out. <laughs> 